You know, I got into magic as a boy. Uh, I watched the TV show. Became very intrigued with the art of magic, so I began to learn, uh, as well as piano. Music and magic has been my, my life. We came to Hot Springs for a visit. I decided to go full-time in magic back in the early 90s, and we decided this would be a fantastic place for the theater. Renovation project to me means that a historic and iconic building in Hot Springs will be brought back to life. Uh, for so many years, it was a place, uh, a thriving business, a place where people went for an afternoon or an evening out. You know, every time I pass it, I think about it, I prayed about it. I think about it a month before this happened. I said, you know, God, either give me that building back or do something with it. I'm tired of looking at it. Memories of standing in line, let me tell you, I remember going to see Jaws. You're going to need a bigger boat. And the line was so long, it went all the way down Central Avenue to Market Street. By the time I started going to the Malco and, and in public places, segregation was a thing of the past. You walk in the, the Malco and there's a presence about it that's really unique. You know, you're just the history of the theater, it kind of overwhelms you when you come in. I think it's going to be the finest theater in the South, I really do. Magic, mystery, entertainment, the Malco. Before we can tell the story of the Malco Theater, we need to go back in time, back to the early 1900s when silent motion pictures were taking the country by storm. Frank Head of Hot Springs, Arkansas, commissioned the construction of the Princess Theater in 1910 for viewing silent movies as well as traveling vaudeville shows. By 1927, local resident Sidney Nutt Sr. bought the Princess Theater, converting it to sound in 1929 as talkies began to replace silent films. I'm going to use number one. Keep your eye on that thumb, baby, and see what happens. I still got my eye on the thumb. This was a 1,200-seat movie theater with the balconies and a giant screen up there the, with a matching curtain that encased the entire screen. We would open up. And, of course, they had some vaudeville-type acts here, I think. Uh, they would perform in front of the screen back in those days. Hot Springs suffered several catastrophic fires in 1913 and 1923. The Princess survived until Christmas Eve 1935. A blaze destroyed all but the building's foundation and its concrete entrance on Broadway Street. By 1936, owner Sidney Nutt sold his interest in the Princess to innovator M. A. Lightman, a successful theater owner throughout the South and founder of Malco Theaters Incorporated. The Princess was renamed the Malco Theater. This is one of the doors that was in the theater before it was the Malco. It was actually called the Princess. Uh, that's the key. This was a box office door. I have a couple of these. Thirteen years later, when the 1946 rolls around, the Malco used some of the substructures you can see down below with the rock walls and some of the things that were left behind from the Princess, and they built on the, uh, the site. We now have this structure got it back to the point to where it was 1946 when it was originally a movie theater. Like the last time we came through we had a bathroom here, we had walls up, but this is this is what it looked like in 1946. You could actually stand here and watch the film. By 1946, the $250,000 reconstruction of the theater was completed. It featured brightly lit neon marquees, art deco designs, and orchestra and balcony sections. Boasting the finest projection and sound systems available, the Malco was considered the showplace of the South. My first memory of the Malco would be going to the uh, 
matinee in the afternoon in the late 40s, and I believe that the price of admission was 12 cents. I remember walking in and just the grand staircase, and someone mentioned earlier the wallpaper being taken down and the court jester being on the wall. I remember that. We wanted to bring particular attention to our mural, uh, which was found after we pulled the wallpaper from the wall. The wallpaper was put up in 1962, but this mural was a senior project, a senior in high school from Hot Springs High by the name of John Antonio. John went on to work for some big, big advertising agencies, and he coined the phrase for American Airlines, Fly the Friendly Skies, the Pillsbury Doughboy, the Clemson Tiger's Paw. So he uh, really went on and was really big in the advertising world. But it's wonderful we discovered this mural. We have uh, painted around it. We're basically going to polyurethane over it and leave it for all the guests to see, and we'll have a nice plaque here in memory of John. The renovation project is exciting to me because it, it brings back the history of the theater. Come and get a shot of what this building's made of. This is 27 inch steel girder beams. Iron beams that, to hold up the main structure. This building is built like a, a fortress. It could be a bomb shelter. I was a little boy and my hero was the Lone Ranger and they had a Lone Ranger movie there one Saturday. I'll wear this mask until justice has been dealt to the last murderer and outlaw. You got a free Lone Ranger mask if you attended the, the matinee. And I remember walking in the lobby and they were all stacked up in boxes, you know, just on top of each other. Couldn't wait to get, get my mask and get home and put it on. It's also interesting, again, to have that open space, the single theater, um, the movie palace. It was large. It was the biggest theater in Hot Springs, and it had been the biggest theater I'd ever been in. And what impressed me was just the size of it. So when I was here before, in the, in the 12 years, there was a wall right up here, which you can see. And this was my theater on this side. Of course, the stage came way right out. But... We had a 229-seat theater on this side and a 250-seat theater, which was a movie theater, on the other side. And these were all one-inch neon lights, which we are going to re restore. All three areas. And this will basically be the back wall of the theater right here as the new restrooms will go from here back. But there'll be a family room, a men's room, two ladies' rooms at this end, in between where these poles are located, it's going to be a close-up magic theater. So we weren't really sure what we're going to do with this drop ceiling. Uh, of course, we're not going to leave it. Uh, we contemplated taking it out, but I found these wonderful Art Deco panels online, and uh, this is what it will look like. Very rich, very cool. Now we're going to try to keep this intact. This was another restroom, which was the men's room. Of course, the, uh, the center's been taken out. Oh, there's where the water's running. It's been running for 90 years. <laughs> Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And the Elijah Company, which is Malcolm, uh, built this for his own use when he was in town. And a uh, little bathroom here. With this very cool Art Deco apartment, sink, stove, refrigerator, all in one piece, all in porcelain. Going to the Saturday afternoon matinees for, for kids and we always went in the back entrance, the entrance on Broadway Street. And I can remember vividly, I can remember standing out there, there were two lines, one for the white kids and one for the black kids. We went in our entrance and the black kids went in their entrance and that was pretty much the last we saw of each other. Sadly, from 1929 to 1964, public buildings were segregated. The colored entrance was on the Broadway side of the Malco, while the white entrance was on Central Avenue. African-American seating was limited to the balcony. The segregation at that particular time, and I'm talking about the 40s and the 50s and, and into the 60s, we went so far as to have separate water fountains. There would be a colored water fountain and a white water fountain. If you die of thirst, 
you wait until you get home. I mean, don't you ever, ever drink at that fountain. Now that stuff really stuck in my head. Oh my gosh! Still works. I had no idea. Still has water going to it. I don't know how it, safe that is. It's cold! Certain things like you could not go into the Malco. You had to go to the back or the side of the Malco. There was an entrance for the black and there was an entrance for the white. So this was originally the box office area where they would sell tickets from this side. I think the whites could come in here, but the African Americans had their own entrance here with their own marquee. Of course, the next attraction, tickets were bought here. Then they had their own restrooms. The concession stand was open to both sides, so you could see one another across the concession stand. The African Americans could buy concessions going up, and then there was a stairway, rather small stairway that went up there for them. And that's where you saw the romantic movies. When you got a little older, you take your girlfriend. Blacks went upstairs, and whites went downstairs. And they sat in the balcony in a section, perhaps maybe a fourth of the balcony, and there was a wall there. The movies from the perspective of a black child watching them, yeah, it brought some things to it, but it wasn't the only recreational thing. And for us, I wouldn't say the main recreational thing. For us, going to the movies was a treat. We knew we were involved in something real big. And we were told not to argue, to be respectful. Maybe 30 years, this is... Uh, yeah, it's dated uh, Theater Pickerton made May 11, 1963. Now there's a partial ticket stuff to show that we obviously gained the admittance. Racial segregation in theaters was a, a big issue. Um, and in the 1960s, it was a flashpoint for the civil rights movement. Well, you know, being a child, it, it just didn't occur to me how wrong that was. And as I grew older and learned how bad it was, fortunately that stopped. I think the, the balcony seats are the best seats in the house. <laughs> so that's kind of the paradigm. With the civil rights movement in the 1960s, segregation of entrances and seating were abolished. The Arkansas Historic Preservation Program has stated the Malco Theater may be one of only two such formerly segregated theaters still in existence in the United States. In 1995, the Malco closed its doors as a movie theater and came under new management. The Malco Theater as a movie theater just dwindled away. I think in 1995 when it closed, they had those $1 films here. The tourists just don't do those type things. Cold rainy day. Yeah. Not a good day to be on the marquee, I guarantee. The film will go on. <laughs> Illusionist Maxwell Blade and his Theater of Magic would revitalize downtown Hot Springs. Joined in 1996, the Hot Springs Documentary Film Institute would attract filmmakers and enthusiasts from around the world. Hi, my name is Jim Miller. I'm the assistant festival director here at the 20th Annual Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival. It's our 20th year. Uh, it started in 1991. We started with a very small collection of films, Academy Award nominated films. We're known as the Filmmakers Film Festival. And we're making artwork happen. And we're showing educational films. We're promoting the city of Hot Springs, which I think is important. And we were able to co-op a deal with the Film Institute about 12 years, and then they decided that wasn't the direction, so we, we had to move from this building. With this theater, there are no trap doors. There are no girls, there are no boxes. And the style of magic I'm performing is the most difficult. Therefore, it's mind-boggling some of the things that you're going to see me do. And it's almost like, you know, it's impossible. And that's what makes close-up magic so profound as opposed to the big box tricks. I mean, this can be impossible to just bring cards from nowhere. I mean, you can't do that. The Malco Theater was added to the National Register of Historic Places on January 21st, 2010. In September 2016, 
Hot Springs Sentinel record reported that Maxwell Blade was going home to the Malco Theater. After eight years in a smaller theater, this building became available again, so here we are uh, in a total remodel. As you can see now, it's been gutted out, and now it will be a state-of-the-art 325-seat performance venue built strictly for the magic show, but we'll have all types of entertainment in this building. And you cut the other ones out last week? Yeah, yeah, and they was heavy. Only three guys to take the pieces apart, move them from where they was at. We've got all yeah. of our panels. Yeah, we take loose. And we separate, see this separates from this section up here. And they'll come in here with the cutting torch and they'll cut it down and then we'll carry it out. This is uh, part of the process of putting sprinklers in the building, which is a massive undertaking because we have to sprinkle everything. Every single room in the basement's been done. But this is the main pipe. And then, of course, according to uh, fire code, they put sprinkler heads in each room. It's a 14,000 pound lift that we rented to get up there, which we have 32 by seconds. So I drove that thing down the hallway, down a ramp I had to build, down two steps, and then through that little hole. That's talent right there. <laughs> As you can see, the ceilings are now blacked out. See, I've got my wall colors picked out. The metallic gold, the black, and then the red. It's a deco building, and, and we kept it deco. We tried, the whole theme architecturally from the beginning was the new old Malco was to preserve everything historic that was significant while, while adding new flair and adding new technology and new systems throughout. That was the push, that was the impetus. I think we pulled it off. This is our carpet I picked out, found it out in Las Vegas. This will be in the upper lobby, the gold, the black and red will be the carpet for the lobby in the hallway. These are original from 1962. These will go up over the snack bar area and have the big white four inch clear balls. Max stated restoring the historic theater to its former glory was a dream he had for years. This was, uh, was our home for 12 wonderful years and we made an impression on a lot of people around the world, but this time I think it's gonna be a little different. And the impression I'm gonna make now is gonna be the big deal. The renovation project of the Malco, to me, is bringing back a part of my teenage years growing up. I don't think of the Malco as kind of a creepy place. I think of it as like a fun place where there's that energy of the movies, the history there. These are the original automated tickets. These tickets were stored in the in the safe. So if you wanted five tickets to say Maxwell Blade, see here? There you go. <laughs> Still working. First International Theaters, five dollars, dollar fifty, which would be in the matinee. We may find a way to utilize these just to have the nostalgia of buying an old school ticket. How many do you like? One? No problem. This will be a show unlike anything in the world. And my creative juices flow like no, never before. And I will bring all those elements together with the knowledge of a lot of other people who have taken part in this project. The Malco now features a 350 seat auditorium, state of the art digital projection and lighting systems, and Arkansas's first 3D projection mapping experience pushing the boundaries of mind-altering illusion beyond imagination. I bought the limousine primarily to bring guests, to pick up guests at the hotels and bring them here. Did you ride in the limo on the way over? Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, it's only going to be six people a night, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to park it out front. It's kind of a roaming billboard, and uh, I'll ride in the car back when you see your hotel. We're riding in the limo. Hot Springs in the limo. That'll be like a, just an extra extra fact. There's a few people a night that can have that opportunity. Welcoming visitors from around the world is a rich Art Deco lobby, new digital video marquees, an ever-expanding Curiosity Museum. So the Curiosity Museum will also move as we move the magic show into the Malco, and it is a collection of over 30 years of oddities and curiosities from all over this world. It entails about 400 items that I've collected all throughout my life, so we hope you enjoy the curiosities and the oddities here at the Malco. And the comedy and amazing magic of Maxwell Blade.
Rick Williams, who's the owner of this property, came to me uh, in the beginning and said, Maxwell, I, I believe in you. This, this is your legacy. The Malco Theater is your legacy. And he, he knows about my passion and I know about his passion for hot springs. And he said, let's do whatever it takes to make this happen. So here we are. I think uh, it's good to come home. I, I feel like this is home. I love my little theater, don't get me wrong, but this is more like home to me. And to have more space, of course, this is going to triple the size of my theater. To come back here and to be able to have it one theater instead of two, I mean, look at the space we have. It's going to be an incredible space. And to be able to do some large illusions again and float my piano, vanish my piano, whatever we come up with. The Malco Theater has now come full circle. From its humble beginnings of live vaudeville shows to once again featuring spectacular live entertainment, restoring the Malco Theater to the showplace of the South. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words. How wonderful.